Am I on here? Yes. Good evening. The time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, I can remember what I did with my glasses. We'll be all set. Here we go. Uh, we open each meeting with a hearing of visitors. This is an opportunity. If uh, any member of the public would like to comment directly to the Brockton School Committee, uh, you can sign up prior to the meeting. Uh, we ask you to limit your comments to three minutes. And uh, all comments are taken under advisement by the School Committee. There is no direct response from the School Committee, but your thoughts and comments will be taken under advisement. Uh, we do have a couple of speakers. Uh, that have requested uh, time this evening. Uh, first signed up tonight is Jasmine Bennett. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, I'm Valerie Bennett, Jasmine's mom. Great to see you. This is Jasmine. Um, Hi Jasmine, how are you? Hi. What school do you go to, Jasmine? I go to Ashfield. All right. So what would you like to say to us tonight? Um, I wanted to just come before you and introduce myself. My name is Jasmine Bennett, and I'm in, um, a sixth grade student at, at the Ashfield School. I recently sent each member of the school committee a letter in regards to me being accepted as a, sup a student ambassador to People to People organization. The People to People organization or ambassador program was started by President Eisenhower. Um, in his vision, he believed people could promote more peace by learning about new culture in places. My acceptance was based on leadership, a desire to learn about other cultures in different places around the world. I am very happy to be a part of this program and I can't wait to visit Alaska in July. As a student from Brockton, I want you to know that I look forward to starting a great future for me and a good reputation for Brockton. Well, she, congratulations. Yeah, Go ahead. She Thank recently you. sent out letters, so you guys would, and we want to come so you can meet her in person and yeah. know who she is. So you will receive a letter with a little bit more information on what the program is about and what she will be achieving when she goes. All right. Do you, is it a letter, an email? Or, I don't recall seeing it. That's right. Uh, it was. It was a letter, and it, you should get it soon enough. It, okay. it was. In, it's been in the mail. It went okay. in the mail, so you guys should All receive right. it. If you haven't, we'll we'll double check and then we'll get something else out to you. Okay. Well, we look forward to supporting you in any way we can, Jasmine. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jasmine, are you going to be dressing warmly? I hope you're wearing the silver <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah. I love those boots. Oh, they are very comfortable. I can tell. <laughs> That's very exciting. Thank you. Thank we'll, you. We'll look forward to hearing from you again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Next uh, request to speak is from Mr. Ron Matta. It's a tough act to follow, Mr. Matta. <laughs> <laughs> True. I just followed it. <laughs> there you go. We'll give you a second to get together there. Uh, I spoke before this committee a few years ago about uh, uh, mismanagement and possible wrongdoing uh, uh, in the school department. At that time, my, my concerns fell upon deaf ears. I'm here tonight to talk about George Bezra. Uh, who, uh, this man was paid over $100,000 a year as facilities manager for the school department. He betrayed the public trust by giving out $1.3 million in no-bid contracts to his friends and business associates and was allowed to go free. Mr. Vasopolo was charged with a four thousand, accepting a $4,000 bribe and he was sent to jail. When I was in the Inspector General's office with an agent, he gave me the final report on the investigation and he said, and I quote, this is my opinion and not the opinion of this office that this man should go to jail. Am I the only one in the city of almost 100,000 people that's, not, that's outraged by this miscarriage of justice? 
Am I the only one with the courage to stand up and demand that this man be prosecuted? I believe as elected officials, it's your duty to hold this man accountable. That agent told, basically was telling me that day that no one was going to be held accountable. And no one has been held accountable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mana. All right, that is uh, all we have for hearing of visitors. So we will move on to tonight's agenda. Um, we, the first part of the agenda is what's called the consent agenda. This is a manner in which the school committee uh, conducts uh, routine business as a block of items with uh, one vote. However, any member of the school committee can request that any individual item from the consent agenda be removed for individual consideration. So I'll ask at this time, are there any members of the school committee that would like to remove any of the items from tonight's consent agenda for individual consideration? Mr. Minicello. Enclosure number five. So that is item E. Item E. Yeah. Okay, so item E will be removed uh, from the consent agenda. Any others? Okay. Approved. Hearing no others, I'll yep, entertain a motion. Motion to approve excluding yes. item E. Yes. Second. Motion properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? The consent agenda passes unanimously. Uh, Mr. Minicello, item E. Uh, I'd just like to point out that item E is a donation, a donation to the uh, school department from School on Wheels, who are donating some monies to the Champion High School for the purchase of bus passes uh, for transportation. So we are um, a partners with that organization. They do very good work. They um, service many of our students who are unfortunately homeless and um, reside at some of the um, hotels and motels throughout the city and um, it's a good partnership and they do good work so I just wanted to thank them personally and I know the school department appreciates their uh, donation. So um, if nothing else I would do a motion to approve. Motion on the floor to approve item E. Any discussion on the motion? Second? Second? Seconded by Mrs. Joyce. All in favor? Opposed? Can I make Sure, a absolutely. Please, Superintendent. So, School on Wheels, uh, I've actually worked very closely with Cheryl Opper and her wonderful staff. Uh, the number of volunteers keeps increasing with certainly the success that they have had. I recently went to um, uh, a celebration that they had. They actually received a check for, I want to say, $35,000 from NECN and I think it's Eastern Bank. And this again is uh, a testament to the work that they're doing for our neediest population. Uh, for students that are our homeless students in scattered housing, they provide tutoring, they provide family support, they provide opportunities for these kids, like all of our kids looking to go to college. They'll make sure that the children have every opportunity that every other child has. So again, I want to thank that organization and this of course, again, to our champion students allows them to get back and forth you know, from school, uh, if they're staying late, for a number of opportunities to get additional help. So thank you. Uh, I, I also had a chance to attend that uh, same event and just in case, Superintendent, I think it might have been Citizens Bank. I'm not sorry. Eastern Bank. Let's <laughs> <laughs> hey, make sure we acknowledge the right corporate sponsor. Um, but they are a great organization doing incredible work with uh, some, some of our kids that really face challenges in their home life but uh, still get a first class education in the Brockton Public Schools. So, well, uh, duly noted, Mr. Minicello. Uh, with that, uh, we'll move on to the uh, report of the Superintendent of Schools. Uh, I'd like to start uh, with our student representative, uh, Jessica, and before I do, I just want to mention to Jessica to sh share with her fellow students that during the fall I had the opportunity to come to the high school. Uh, I had uh, a meeting with the students for Youth Voice as part of the transition team. So I want you to go back. I'll be talking to Principal Boulder about setting up a follow-up meeting, which is what I told them that I would do. And I think what I'd like to do is probably set up a luncheon so that we can actually sit and have some conversations. So we'll be setting up a time uh, to get back, and you can certainly bring that back to the Student Council. Okay, thank you. All right, 
a lot of congratulations in order this week. Um, starting with National History Day, our regional winners. Um, these students will compete in a state national history day competition at Stonehill High School in April. So we'll start with our senior group exhibit. We have first place going to Freedom Riders, Hannah Wainwright, Nashley Tevin, and Ludi Barboza Vincente. Individu individual exhibits, first place World War II, Woman on the Home Front, and Overseas Ariana Jones. Um, second place, the Women's Right Movement, Christina Lebron. Moving to the senior individual documentary, first place goes to Nazi Germany, Selena Dean. Third place, Ancient Athens, Right of the Citizens and Responsibilities of the Government, Sojourney Scrub. Senior group documentary, third place, Pope Pius Unmasked, Skylene Elson, and Sophia Turin. Um, our senior group documentary, third place, Pope Pius, oh, sorry, I just read that again. Um, senior individual performances, third place, Malcolm X, Donye Smith. Senior group performances, first place, The Great Depression, The Rights of the People, and the Responsibility of the Governments, going to Brooke Reynolds and Samantha Gr McGraw. And senior individual website, first place, The Velvet Revolution, Gilberto Silva. So th those are our wonderful National History Day winners. For the now show. that was the regionals here this past weekend. Yes. And now they're going to, what's it, what's it, it's at Stonehill College? The National History Day competition at Stonehill College. It will be in April. I'm not sure what, which week, but yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, moving on, we have our Drama Club announcement. Um, congratulations to the Drama Club. They had a big win this week, last weekend. Um, their competition piece, Wildly and the Harry Man, earned many awards, 13 <coughs> All-Star Acting Awards, going to Vanessa Vega, Mickey Jones, Max Tunis, Tyena Stockler, Jonathan Shea, Jeremy Matos, Kathleen Mata, Jasmine, Jasmine Slade, Fernando Martins, Sabrina Victor, Sarah Henry, Javon Graham, and Joe Cicilani. Um, Brockton also won a set design award and costume design award. The students who won these were Priscilla Campbell, Evan Coop, Kathleen Joe Cooper, uh, Stephanie Soko, Jordan Sandys, <coughs> Ramsey Balsa Bala, Alina Boucher, Donye Smith, Michaela Sacano Moore, Hannah Wainwright, Nash Nashley Tavins, and Sarah Chum. In two weeks, Brockton competes at the semifinals. That was a big achievement. And the Drama Club will be presenting their preview of this competition to the public on March 14th. So that would be great to see. I've heard it's awesome, so I'm excited. So that's next Friday night, yeah. and that's open to the public? Yeah. And I've heard it's about a 40-minute <coughs> production. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. And um, lastly, we have like the, we have the track announcement. Congratulations to Jonathan Drulis, who, who finished in fourth place in the New England Invitational Meet. He set a record in the 55-meter dash for Brockton High School. He broke the old record, which was 6.49, that stood for 17 years. Jonathan ran a time of 6.47 in the preliminary round. He qualified for nationals. So congratulations, that's a big deal. And lastly, sophomore ELA MCAS is March 18th, 19th, and 21st. Yay! I can't wait. I'm excited. And that's What's happening in Brockton High? Okay, so first of all, we are the City of Champions. Of course. Uh, that's pretty evident. I stole your thunder. <laughs> and also, um, you know, it's a good night's sleep. And what is it, Principal Walder? Good breakfast, good night's sleep. So for parents listening, uh, breakfast is served for our sophomore class at Brockton High before the MCAS. They should get a good night's sleep every night. Uh, but we're, again, we're wishing you well. We know you'll make us proud and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, uh, we have two presentations this evening, and if you recall back uh, in the beginning of the year, we talked about bringing schools before you. So again, we come and we tell you the big stories, but sometimes it's important for the schools to come and tell you individually some of the things happening at the schools that you support each and every day. So I'm very pleased to invite up uh, Principal Brian Rogan and his staff. Um, I think Janet McDuffie uh, coming up also. So Janet is recently retired after many, many years in the Brockton Public Schools. Many, many years. <coughs> and uh, Janet um, came back and talked to Brian about a program that she had researched, knowing the community as well as she does. Um, I'm going to let them tell you about the blessings in a backpack, which I think is very exciting and uh, certainly welcomed in our community. So welcome. Good evening, Mayor Carpenter. And good evening, Mayor, uh, members of the school committee. Uh, as Mrs. Smith said, today one of the programs we'd like to talk to you about is the uh, Blessings in a Backpack program. And um, one of, this is something that has been a uh, passion of Mrs. McDuffie. Uh, since she retired, she wanted to continue to be involved with uh, the Kennedy students in the Kennedy uh, school. And she spent some time uh, researching this program. And when she came to talk to me about it, she said there were uh, a number of uh, websites and things that uh, I could take a look at so that I could learn about it as well. In going through it, it said the thing that to make this program be successful was to have a uh, compassionate person who would be the uh, leader of this. And that certainly um, describes uh, Mrs. McDuffie. Uh, she's the person who uh, really got this going and her uh, foot soldiers were uh, two of her daughters, uh, Megan Somberg and uh, Jamie Milnamo. Jamie is currently on my staff as uh, my instructional resource specialist and uh, Megan is an engineer. Uh, but they also share uh, their mother's passion with this program. And what Blessings in a Backpack tries to do is to have our students continue uh, to be successful. During the week, uh, we work hard at being sure that all of our children are uh, fed, having breakfast available, having school lunch available. But there are many children that need uh, some support over the weekend. And uh, they don't have uh, things that might be uh, nutritional nutritional and helpful for them. And what Blessings in a Backpack uh, does that, helps us to uh, provide for the needs of the students. Uh, what we've done is work with our school staff, our school adjustment counselor, our administration, our teachers, and um, being able to identify students who uh, might benefit from some nutritional food that they're able to take home in their backpack on Friday. The uh, parents were uh, notified by um, our school counselors and uh, they had the opportunity to um, be involved in the program or they had the opportunity to uh, opt out as well. And uh, the majority of the parents were uh, very helpful. Uh, a number of the families are families that uh, are new to our community. Uh, there are some uh, children that are involved who uh, their parents are in a situation of just having a hard time now with uh, a dad out of work because of uh, a medical condition, uh, a mom who was laid off, and those types of things. And this was just able to give uh, some of our students a little extra uh, support and help. One of the things that really uh, is the icing on the cake of, a, of the program is there was one uh, little guy who was a kindergartner. He happened to be absent on Friday. And on Monday, before he went home, when, when I went to catch up with him and put the bag in his uh, backpack, he looked at me uh, with a great big smile and said, oh, the great food. Thank you very much. And that kind of sums up the enthusiasm from the students as well. So what I'd like to do at this time is uh, give Megan and uh, Jan and Jamie a time to go over a lot of the particulars of the program with you. So uh, Mrs. Smith, thank you for uh, inviting us to come. And uh, I think the uh, information that they'll share with you uh, will show you how valuable this uh, program is for us. Thank you very much. So thank
thank you, Brian, uh, and thank you, everybody here, uh, for the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about Blessings in a Backpack. But before I start talking about uh, the program itself, I thought I'd introduce me to you. Uh, my name's Megan Schoenberg, uh, Megan McDuffie, before the Schoenberg. I grew up in Brockton, I grew up in Campello. Uh, my mother was a teacher in Brockton, my father a firefighter in Brockton. He actually served on the school committee for many years. Uh, my sister is now a teacher in Brockton. My uncle was a teacher and coach at Brockton High School, so we definitely have roots uh, that you can read about uh, here in Brockton. Uh, and I'm proud to say that I was part of a community that uh, really cared about each other, cared about doing the right thing all of the time, and we felt like champions, you know, the, the city of champions all the time. Started out at the Goddard, went to the Gilmore, then the Arnone, West Junior High, and then finally graduated from BHS. So uh, when I graduated from college uh, when I started my own family and I went to the hairdresser one day and opened up People magazine and saw this little boy uh, inside of the magazine my heart sank because when I saw this little boy I saw the kids that I grew up with I saw the kids that exist today that my my sister is teaching and that at the time my mother was teaching in the school system in Brockton uh, and it it I just couldn't let it leave my mind. This boy is a smart little boy who's trying his best. His mother is trying her best. Uh, his mother is struggling a little bit to try to provide all the things that's necessary for her son to concentrate on his studies and uh, do the best that he can in school. And if if, the, if she can't help, and if we can't help her do that, then how is it that, uh, that I can truly say that when I grew up in Brockton, I, I really felt that uh, people believed in each other and, and helped each other out? That's what I couldn't get out of my mind, is that if I can't help this kid uh, succeed in the way that he needs to succeed, uh, that I really wasn't doing my job as a, as a good citizen. These kids are like all the kids that we've seen. Uh, you can just imagine that uh, um, these kids, how hard it is for them to concentrate on uh, their studies when they walk in on Monday morning and they have nothing to eat. Some of these kids, uh, um, the only food that they eat during the week is the meals that they receive at school, the breakfast and, and lunch that they receive at school. And that's just unacceptable. How many things that do we have uh, on the weekends to give to our own children? And these kids, uh, the amount of food that we're giving them is so minimal compared to that amount of food that I give my own children that uh, I just felt a responsibility to uh, deliver that uh, to these kids so that they can be more productive. Uh, people in society and truly become the leaders of this city and we need leaders in this city uh, so at that point in time I, I mentioned it to my mother mentioned it to my sister and my mother shared that passion for m with me uh, and we uh, absolutely just immediately thought of the Kennedy School because of her connection my sister's connection to that school and uh, we're so grateful to be able to provide this service uh, to some of the students at the Kennedy School so just to take a couple steps back uh, blessings in a back Pack partners with America to ensure impoverished elementary school children are fed on the weekends throughout the school year. So it's really as simple as that. We give them food on Fridays so they have something to eat over the weekend. There are 12 million children in the United States who are on the free uh, meal program at their school. And in some schools, uh, some elementary schools in Brockton, close to 90% of those students are on the free or reduced meal program. So that means 90% of students at some of these schools, some of them their only meal are the meals that they receive at school. At the Kennedy School, close to 50% of the students, so there are about 650 kids there, so that means 325 children or thereabouts um, are on the free meal program. So the only food that they receive um, uh, is free through the, for the free, free meal program, uh, both, both breakfast and lunch. This inspired me to move forward with the program. It's, uh, um, it's been a pleasure to be part of it so far. So studies show that better test scores, improved reading skills, positive behavior, so on and so forth, are all attributed uh, to programs like this one. So it's not just about having a growling belly. I just imagine sometimes, you know, when I'm at work and uh, I didn't eat enough for lunch or enough for breakfast and I'm sitting in a meeting, how hard it is to concentrate on what people are saying, um, how hard it is to sit still because all you want to do is sort of get up and move. And now imagine being six or seven or eight and feeling that and just not understanding uh, why you're in the 
this position. So we really truly believe that we're feeding the next leaders of this great city. So how does it work? The national organization supports us in, in terms of all of the overhead fees, uh, so accounting and, um, and uh, advertisements and all of that good stuff. Uh, so 100% of the funds that are collected through this program, if they're donated to our program, are actually used to purchase food. So we've uh, partnered with Market Basket, who's our grocer, and we purchase food from Market Basket, um, separate out that food in small bags, and then my mother delivers the food every Friday to the school, and the school uh, distributes it to the 50 children uh, that we have identified as being part of the program. Uh, we try to keep the backpacks as fun as possible, but nutritious as well, uh, so that they believe that they're receiving a bag of treats, not uh, you know all the crummy stuff that you have to eat. <laughs> uh, $80 will feed one child for um, uh, all the weekends of an entire school year. So that comes out to about $2 a week. So that's one cup of coffee will feed a child for uh, the entire school year. When, when you really put it in perspective, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the menu items, uh, you'll see oatmeal, you'll see fresh fruit, applesauce, pudding. They really like the pudding. There's a lot of calcium in pudding. Um, uh, granola bars, uh, canned soup, and, and so forth. Um, anything that they can easily prepare themselves and also share with their families. So as I mentioned, we started out by feeding uh, 50 students on the weekends, but we believe this to just be a beginning. Uh, we started out with 50 students so that we can, uh, you know, really do a, a good service for them. Uh, but as our hope is, is as we raise more funds, we're able to spread uh, to the other students in the Kennedy School and also um, hope to inspire others to help us to spread this program into other schools in the city as well. Um, so why are we here today? Uh, we wanted to tell you about the program. Um, obviously we're supported by private donations um, and I've put uh, our uh, donation website up there. It's also on the handout that I think that you all have. Um, I did want to mention that uh, all donations made through the iFundy site are actually matched. I think on your, on your um, handout it says only in 2013 but it's actually matched through uh, this school year. My brother, it's a family affair here, my brother is actually one of the founders of the iFundy site. Uh, so they're doing that service for us as well. So that means that uh, your $10 bec becomes $20. Uh, so $40 will actually feed one student for the entire school year. I've also mentioned our Facebook site here because I like to post uh, um, information about kids doing well in Brockton and uh, things that we're doing um, uh, having to do with the, the program. So come and like us on Facebook because awareness about this program is really key to our success. Um, so I guess that's about it. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you for your involvement and your commitment. I mean, it's just incredible what you're doing. Um, is there a way, do you have any information that we could bring to our other PTA meetings and spread the word? Because um, many of us obviously, um, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Um, Mr. Rogan keeps good secrets. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, last night I had my PTA meeting with the Hancock, which is in my ward. But um, next month, if there's something I could ha hand out, that would be great. Mrs. Absolutely has handouts for you. Oh, okay. I have some additional ones as well that I'd be happy to okay, provide well, we'll, you. I, I, can, to. I can have copies made okay. so that we can have something. Um, um, again, I just want to thank you for your great work. I mean, you sit here and you're just so humbled by something that just makes so much sense. And, you know, it's, you know, seeing those little kids is basically why we're all here. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's important to understand that there are far more children in this situation than Joe Q Public is aware. Many of these kids live next door to you and you just don't know how needy they are. So, it kind I mean, it, as Megan explained, it's kind of impossible to not take that home with you. I mean, how do you not see a little kid and think that they don't have food? It's just, I mean, how much more basic can life get than incredible to me. Well, like you, you know, many of us have grown up here and it's it's sad when you see oh, how many families are in this position and um, you know seeing the little boy at the motel 
I was talking to Superintendent Smith about this the other day and we couldn't believe the numbers of kids in our system that are now in this situation at hotels and motels so um, you know, hats off to you and we'll do whatever we can do to help. Thank you. Mr. Um, I want to thank you guys too. I, I was fortunate I heard about this program. NPR did a thing I think about six months ago mm -hmm. and I heard about it. Um, phenomenal. Um, I think oftentimes in my mind we have a lot of students in need in our district and oftentimes we're looked at as a school district or as a school committee for the solutions to some of those and I think this is kind of the perfect example about how we don't as a school committee or as, as administrators or building principals we don't have to be the ones to provide the solution but just help facilitate mm -hmm. um, and, and how some of the solutions exist outside of our school walls and our community and by just creating a space in our schools for it we can serve our students and their families in, in ways that are so meaningful. Um, I um, this is amazing work, and um, but I, I wonder if you have thought about or if you plan to in any way address, say, like a vacation week. Um, you know, obviously the needs that that come from um, not being in school for two days mm -hmm. are, are great, and and how that impacts a student's ability to come back to school on Monday and be ready for learning and teaching to take place. But when you multiply that by um, say three or four mm -hmm. on a vacation week or uh, by three months over a summer. Um, um, not to say that you have to be the ones to provide the entire solution, but I wonder um, if you're thinking about that or if, if there are um, ways we can uh, help facilitate or, mm -hmm. or support expanding this program, not just other schools, but to, to meet those same needs over over school vacation weeks or over summer. So. Mm -hmm. And we just had a, vaca a vacation week that um, that came by. We started distributing food uh, the last week in January, so this is reasonably still new for us. Um, but we just had a vacation week, and we actually went through the. We have six different menus that we have to keep it interesting for the kids, and we tried to find the one that had the most substantial food in it to provide right before the beginning of vacation. And if you remember correctly, there was a snowstorm, many snowstorms, the week right before vacation. So we were actually worried that we wouldn't be able to get the food to the kids. We were thinking about how can we, you know, get it out there in between the storms to make sure it's yeah. at the school and all that good stuff. It's a major problem. I remember my sister told me a story about a, a student that she had once um, that was really upset leaving school uh, on a Friday before vacation and she asked, why are you so upset? And she said, because I won't, I won't have anything to eat all week long. It's just, I mean, how devastating. So um, we're thinking about it. It's, it's certainly something that we can't um, take on and expand on right now um, but uh, I would love to talk to some individuals about uh, how we might be able to better facilitate that yeah I mean and I think certainly I don't want to speak for all my school committee but I, I can't imagine that there's any of us that feel like this is a bad thing mm -hmm. but personally honestly if there's anything I can do to help please like, contact me and excellent me thank, you. Um, thank you this is this is important work and your and support and, and so. talking about it at the at the PTA meetings and all that good stuff is is all huge for us just the more people that know about it I think the the more successful we will be the fundraising we have tried to keep we've actually tried to keep most of this on a local level mm -hmm. we made sure that um, we used a grocery store in Brockton um, our donations our uh, fundraising that we've done for the most part has come from you know, friends, family, people who live in Brockton. Mm -hmm. We're trying to keep it as local as possible because we think it's a it's important that it, it's important that, that the people who live here support the program. We also we've all I mean I lived here my whole life. Um, Brockton is a place where people care about each other. It's a place where I mean, if you think of any situation in the city where someone is in need in some way, whether the person be ill or what have you, the whole city comes out to help them. It's just, it's a phenomenal thing for a city of this size. I don't think it's true across the nation. So we do try to keep fundraising and so forth local. And quite frankly, that's the part that I find most difficult. It's, it's yeah. we're getting there. Is 
it is market is Market Basket a partner or just where you shop? That's where we shop. Oh, we, that's where we shop. Yeah, they do collect up all the food for us and, and things like that. Uh, we have uh, started to talk to them about the possibility. All the fundraising for those bigger organizations goes through the national headquarters. Yeah. Um, so we've started applying for grants like that. Um, but one thing that uh, we have started to talk about, um, because again, this is reasonably new to us, is uh, starting to initiate some more fundraising through uh, corporate partners. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you for everything that you're doing. It's just amazing how something so basic makes such a difference mm -hmm. for these kids. Um, yeah, I want to share something with you. My husband coached BYSA soccer, Brockton Youth Soccer, for many, many years. And when the kids had games, I would make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and bring them to the games. And I'll never forget one of the little boys came to me and he said, if you have some extra peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, can I bring them home to my sisters and brothers? And I've never forgotten that. And it's really, really impacted me. And, uh, and it really made me feel sad that, you know, it, it made me feel good that he cared about his sisters and brothers like that. But it made me feel sad that, you know, these kids probably didn't have any sandwiches at home. You know, so it, what you're doing is just really phenomenal, and thank you for bringing it to us. Um, I did have just a couple quick questions. Um, who provides for the match? Uh, How does yes. That work? So um, iFundy is a fundraising site um, that uh, my brother is one of the founders of. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing our fundraising through that, uh, and um, actually he provided, or the iFundy site provided a match on all. Um, uh, donations through the end of 2013 already. Okay. Um, he then decided to extend it through the end of the school year. So we'll probably do a match right around the end of March. So who's that'll providing be the, the, the it, well, it's a monetary match. Uh, right? That's right. Yes. So who's yes. providing the match? Who's, whose pocket is it coming out of? It's coming from my brother's pocket. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're looking for donations in the form of, of money. Yes. Uh, yes. You need funds. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just want to make that clear. You're not yes. looking to have people provide donations in the form of food. Not yet. You We'd like to do that to at some point. Food. Right. We'd like to do that at some point, but we're just not a big enough organization to be able to handle that yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Right now. Yeah. But, uh, yes. So uh, when right we now. go to our our parent groups, we can say this is the the site you go on, and if mm -hmm. you want to make a monetary donation, this is how you do it. Exactly. Okay. Yep. That's Absolutely. Great. And the and the fees on iFundy. Oh, um, I don't think that they'll never, they'll actually see the fees, but there oh, okay. are fees that go towards, um, you know, all the administration of the site, and those fees are donated back to the organization as well. Okay. Okay, great. Well, thank you again. Thanks. I think it's a great program. I mean, I grew up at the Kennedy School. I had Ms. McDuffie for fifth grade and <laughs> Mr. Rogan. Um, I, you know, have grown up there since the first grade. And it was such a great community school growing up. And I still think it's a gem of a school that's kind of hidden away in the neighborhood that a lot of people don't know about. I always liked it that <laughs> And I think that this is great. I know growing up that there were lots of students that I went to school with there that had the same issues they would you know, only have breakfast and lunch and then nothing when they went home and nothing on the weekends. And so anything that I can do to help out volunteers, whatever you guys need, I think it's great. I think you guys are doing a thank you. great thing. How's Thanks. the family? Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that what you guys are doing are, are you know such such great work. I mean, to provide children with the ability to improve their test scores and and come to school, uh, you know, ready to ready to learn is just it, it's a fantastic thing that you're doing. And I just wanted to say, you know, anything I can do to to support it. I think I reached out to you to, yep. uh, to see if I can uh, have my daughter help in any way. That's right. Uh, we'd be happy to help in any way we can. But thank you again. Excellent. Thank you. I want to say also when I hear you talk about this and 
you understand that everybody is involved. When you talk about the teachers, you talk about the school adjustment counselor, you know, it really is a whole school effort to make something like this happen. Um, I will tell you, when you heard me just mention Cheryl Offer in School on Wheels, she again was a woman from the neighboring town of Easton, saw something happen happening in a community about putting backpacks together, and she started in her home. She has grown so large, she's now been, I think, her, she's looking for a third site because it's grown so large. So again, um, I can only see this growing. I, I think it's wonderful. And I will have to say, you always hear me talk about growing your own. When we talk about our own students coming back to be our teachers. So of course, we're thrilled to have Jamie. Megan, we, we didn't catch you, but it sounds <laughs> like you're coming back and, and giving in another way. But I think the community needs to see how important it is when you have your former students sitting here telling you, we understand the community, we understand the need, and how can we let this happen? Mm -hmm. So again, thank you, and obviously you can see the support. Thank you. you know, I just want to add my support also. It's a, it's a great program, and um, I know it's not designed to address over the summer, but we are working on a um, bringing back a summer parks and playground program this summer for kids ages 7 to 12 that will include a free lunch each day. So maybe there might be some opportunity on Fridays during those weeks of the summer for the Great. few hundred kids that are in that program to possibly do something along the same lines for the weekends over the summer. So I look forward to an opportunity to talk to you a little bit more about that. Thank you. Thank whatever you. else we can do to help support you. Excellent. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Is that your sticker? We're going to go to a different part of the city now. We're going to go to the Ashfield School. Um, so I'm going to invite Dr. L Dr. Lovell to come up uh, with your staff, Dr. Lovell, or are you by yourself? You're by yourself. And again, as I told you, we're going to be presenting school so you see the range of things happening at the Asheville School. I will tell you I was there last week. I see it, though, in your presentation, Dr. Lovell, so I won't steal your thunder about what a wonderful happening at the Ash. Okay. Great. So I guess I, I almost feel obliged to say that I was a student at the Kennedy School. I grew up on Ash Street and <laughs> was a student in the Kennedy, but it was way before Mr. Rogan and way before any of those other people were there. So just to start. But um, so I'm just here tonight to talk to you a little bit about the Asheville School and just let you know about some of the things that we have at our school that are a little different from some of the middle schools and what makes us special. So in some ways we're the same as the other middle schools. Um, we are right on board with all of the initiatives that are created. We um, follow the curriculums from the ELA, math, all of the other um, assessments that we have, common assessments. We follow along with everything. Um, we're on the same pacing guides and unit plans. Um, we have the reputation though of being a small school and I just want to say we, we have a small building and the boards are small and but um, we're not really that small of a school. We have about as many students. Um, we have more students in East. We have about the same as South and maybe about 20 less students than North. So when that image of all oh, the Ashfield is a small school, we're just a small building, but we're, we're a regular sized school. Um, we also have three city resource rooms. Um, they have about 36 special education students. We have about a 20% ELL population, um, mostly Haitian and low incidence. And um, overall our, our special ed population is about 20% of our school too. So that's in line with many of the other schools. Um, but we're also very different. Our school is um, amazing in its faculty. We have very dedicated and energetic teachers. Um, and we work really hard to make sure that all of the students at every level have a rigorous standard. Whether you're in the city resource room program, whether you're a bilingual student who is um, in mainstream classes sometimes, in ESL classes others, we always are working to make sure that everyone is held to the high standard. When we take common assessments, our uh, second language learners take the same test in math, science, social studies as all of the other students. So we do make sure that everybody is challenged as much as possible. Um, one of the things that we do that is very different is the fact that we have elective classes at the end of every day when the students go to band or chorus. We also have a variety of electives and I'm going to talk to you about those tonight. And we let everybody 
join equally in those programs. So whether you're, you are a special education student, you may have significant needs, or if you are a second language learner, you're eligible to mix into any of the electives, band, chorus, all of the things that we have, we have full participation. So we're very proud of that inclusive model that we, that we strive for. Um, so we really m make sure that everyone has a chance to be successful. So some of the um, electives that we have at the end of our day is uh, robotics. It's a very interesting class. The kids um, put together the, the uh, Lego Mindstorm robots and we've, they've um, managed to program them for um, to respond to sound. They can um, draw patterns. They can use them to make designs and draw um, things. They've also um, programmed them to, that when they come within uh, close to an object or movement they can turn and move. So they're really sort of experimenting with those and it's again sixth graders, eighth graders, second language learners, special education students all mixed together in the same groups. Um, we have our band. We offer uh, sewing both with machines and hand sewing. A lot of people like that. We have math tutoring in our school during this time. Students can either elect or parents can elect to have their students in some math tutoring. Uh, we have second language um, homework help where we have uh, students, like I said, all of our students take the same exam. Sometimes they need extra help. We have a boys leadership program. This is Mr. Nickley. He's um, one of our new special education teachers and the boys have um, done uh, certain initiatives like uh, walk on Wednesdays. Um, they have run, uh, help run Mix It Up Day. We've had a girls leadership group for four years and this is the first year that we've had a boys leadership group. And um, they've gone to um, different events at say Bridgewater State College and gotten awards, um, the girls leadership got an award from the governor for its uh, uh, efforts in um, kind of diminishing bullying and um, different programs to promote positive attitudes in school. So it's really a great group. Um, we have our computer lab where the students can go in to do work. That's also an elective that kids sign up for. Um, we recently, this term, we had a games of chance where the students created games using probability. It was run by um, our math teachers, um, especially Miss Neme and the students went, they created the games, they figured the probability and um, that led to our carnival of probability and that was um, what Superintendent Smith visited us for the other day. It was really great, it was almost like a Las Vegas night for students. Um, they had uh, you get tickets when you came in the door and um, you were able to play the different games and we gave away more penny candy. There are probably dentists all over the place <laughs> excited about this. But um, it was a really nice night. Teachers, students, a lot of parents and we must have had a few hundred people. So it was really nice. Um, but even there you can see Officer Scanlon stopped by. He's a absolutely the best um, school resource officer in the city. Um, but it was a really nice um, night for everyone. With some of the other games that the kids made. Um, one of the electives that we have, and this is one that we actually, so, so elective, we put the ch children in that, um, is a credit recovery program. So during that elective block, if a student has failed a, a course, either first or second term, um, the teacher creates 10 to 20 um, of the most important assignments in the term that need to really be mastered. They get them together in a folder and we send those students to a classroom with either a math and science expert or an English social studies expert and the students then complete those ex um, different assignments and when they've completed them we can actually change their grade from the first term from an F to a D or depending upon the quality of the work the teacher decides on the grade but they actually get a passing score and we found that to be really beneficial because uh, instead of a summer school where you wait and then you failed the course and then you have to go back and then you don't have the skills you need to complete second term or complete third term. This way they're able to do the assignments right away. The, they're able to then to be on equal footing with the rest of their peers and we also make sure that they're keeping up the second term so that if they've made a mistake and they have failed first term, second term they're all ready to go. So it's been really helpful for us um, and most 
almost every student who's participated has ended up passing for the year. So it's been a great benefit. I think I was, um, Mr. Thomas, who did this at the high school, uh, something like this on a different scale, but we had to try and make it work within our middle school program. So. Um, some of the other electives that we've had, girls leadership, homework help, Zumba, fitness challenge, looking at lyrics, speedball, just dance, science fair, which is where we're preparing for the upcoming science fair, um, chorus, empower yourself, which I know you've heard quite a bit about um, from Mr. Turner, masters of art, word games, contraptions, and reader's corner. And I'll just, I will say that in the um, spring and fall we have many more outdoor activities. Um, we have flag football and all kinds of things. Um, Mary Ellen Crane has helped us to get some funding so that through um, Play 60 and some of the other grants to get some equipment for students so that we can get them active. And that's one way that we're able to f um, increase the amount of physical activity that the students Okay. Um, so four out of five days during elective block we have um, those different activities, but every Wednesday in our school we have a um, sacred time and that is our um, second steps program. During that time the students participate in social skills lessons. Some of them are done by video, some are used um, with uh, the magazine Choices. It's a scholastic magazine that talks about student issues. We also use some Not My Kid materials and videos and um, the eighth graders are actually using the, the movie Bully. And during that time we talk about anti-bullying, about empowering yourself, how to stand up for yourself in a polite and respectful way. Um, and all of those uh, programs have really helped us to keep our school in a nice community. We have, I don't think we've had a physical fight in, in three years in the school. We're very lucky to have um, a very strong staff that believes in the program and it happens every week at you know at 155 to 230 regularly so it's been a really great thing and the last thing that I'd like to talk to you about is the fact that science has been a really big deal for us at our school. This is Mrs. Haynes, our health teacher. She's an absolutely um, fabulous teacher and she was going to teach the students about the circulatory system and how it worked and going through the heart. So she actually dressed up as a blood um, vessel <laughs> and showed how you go through. She divided the floor of the room into four chambers. and. She talked about how we go in through the heart and it's pumped out to different stations, whether it's the arms or the legs, the heart, the lungs. And at every station the students would either pick up cards or drop them off. And the kids went through each of the things and they were actually were given a station to go through when they went through. And they would either like pick up um, they would pick up a waste card, drop off a nutrient card, just to get the idea of how when the, lugs go, the, when the blood goes through different organs, it gets either nourished or um, destroyed. And uh, it, the students had a much uh, better idea of how the circulatory system worked. It was a very neat idea. This picture just is another science class. I took all of these pictures, by the way, within two days. So this kind of shows you this is all happening right now. Um, but this is a picture of the students. They all have their phones out in class. I mean, you'd say, oh no, is that a problem? But we actually um, use them as important tools when needed. Um, the students were completing a lab in which they had uh, colloids, solutions, and suspensions. And they had to uh, decide what they, what they had in the bags, whether, which characteristics it had. And one of the things they needed was light to see if it would trans, uh, transfer through the solutions. And so they used their phones and uh, the lights that they had on them uh, to complete the activity. So we want, we're moving in a direction where we're going to be asking students, to, they're going to have these tools with them, so we need to show them how to use them appropriately. And um, so another thing, we have a science lab. We only have 45 minute science classes um, and so one of the ways that we've combated the lack of uh, hands-on science because it's so quick to be able to set something up and then take it apart that we have a science lab and each of the students has 30 extra science classes and it's only hands-on activities and they have it two days in a row for a whole term. So um, these students were making a, a colloid I believe, um, some sort of a starch activity. But um, 
it, we do have the Gelfand uh, Science Lab. We were able to get that grant and it has paid for the tables, the materials, so much of the equipment that we have that you've seen in the slides. It, it was a really great um, boon to our school to have that. And it's not, I really want to talk about the fact that we are an inclusive school. It's not just, you know, certain kids or our advanced kids that are, uh, have these activities open to them. Even our si uh, city uh, resource room has completed science fair projects. And for those of you who go to the science fair every year, I think most of you, I've seen all of you there. Um, every year um, Ashfield School does send one of our three city resource room projects to the science fair and the students can very clearly articulate for you what their project was, how they tested their hypothesis and the results that they found and um, the students do that with you know guidance from their teacher but they end up creating, this is one of last year's project, but they end up creating the um, whole thing on their own. Again, with help, they actually are able to write down what their hypothesis was, what they believe. The teacher gives them a choice of two or three, and they're able to do the uh, activity just like the other students in the other classrooms. So this is one final activity. This is a bridge building activity that the students in our school did in our science. They're testing their bridge. These are actually two city resource room students who scored the highest amount of weight that was able to fit into their bridge. They were so excited. They started pulling things off the shelves, bottles of glue. Um, books, everything to try and fit it. And uh, their bridge did not break. So they put everything. Okay. So basically, um, that's just an overview of our school, some of the neat things that we do and some of the uh, most important pieces of our school culture. Okay. Sullivan. My hat, because I did a lot of work at the Ashfield School when it was an elementary. Even though it's not in my ward, it's a Ward Six school. Mm -hmm. I'm in Ward Five, and um, Dr. Lovell, mm -hmm. known to me in those days as Mrs. Lovell okay. at the East Junior High, uh, was my daughter's seventh grade um, English teacher, yes. and her care and concern for the students was very impressive. Thank you. Um, and also the Ashfield School, different in many ways, but the same to me. There's still a lot of staff there that was there when I was there over 10 years ago. Um, Gail Manos is still the nurse and Mary LaPointe is still the secretary and um, Debbie Randall is the parent liaison. Parent liaison. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. So that's awesome. Thank you um, very much. I was really impressed by the um, the programs being offered to the students and that they're encouraged to participate and succeed. Thank you. Especially the credit recovery. I hadn't heard of that before because I'm new to the school committee, but I know it's been tried before or used at the high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the empower yourself. And I really like the um, second steps, building a voice to speak appropriately in difficult situations because so many of our kids don't know how to do that. And Thank so you. if we give them those kind of, you know, situations where they can practice that. Right. And we often tell the students, oh, you should speak up to help. You should speak up. Yeah. But being appropriate and speaking up, we don't right. want students to endanger themselves. Right. We, d we want them to know how to speak, how to speak, to whom to speak, right. um, so that they can be effective. Yeah, so Thank you. great presentation. Thanks. Ed, you can have a, it, uh, like I say, these people hold a special place in my hat. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Scott. Uh, thanks for sharing all the great things that are happening at the Asheville. That's, oh, that's really great. I don't get to get into the Asheville very often. You're on the other side of the We're street. We're hidden. So that's, okay. that's okay. It's really great that you can come in and share these great things. I was really impressed with your success rate of your credit recovery. Um, and I think given the fact that you're, you're getting them in the first two terms and working with them in conjunction with the, the, the third and fourth terms, you know, really mm -hmm. makes a difference. And um, it's so easy for kids to get into a rut where they start falling behind and then they, Thank you. they give up. 
and you know by catching them early you know right. you give them a lot of hope that they can still recover and and move forward and be successful so that's great thanks they, they don't even notice sometimes that they end up doing twice the work they may have failed by one point and they end up doing 20 extra assignments so it really <laughs> we really <laughs> give them a lot extra. Well, it hurt. but it works for them very well Thank and you. i did have a quick question on the um on your electives, mm -hmm. how often do they switch electives, and like how many would they? We take have we have trimesters at the Ashfield, so okay. we have first, second, and third term, okay. and the students are um, typically have two electives per term, oh, so they have okay. six in a year that they can choose. Um, certain electives like band and chorus, uh, th they're assigned for the whole year. Yeah. And the girls' leadership and boys' leadership most elect to stay for the whole year. Okay. Um, so if they're in band or chorus, they can choose another elective on top of that? They they don't choose a different elective, they okay, um, but there day. are certain students, for example, if they want to be in girls' leadership or mm -hmm. there's something that they're really interested in, um, on certain days they can be excused from chorus for the day or the they do sometimes maybe go two days to an elective, three days to band and chorus, but it depends on their role in the chorus. It, okay. You know, if you're a vital band member, yeah. Mr. Monroe's not going to give it up. So, <laughs> you know, it, it there are options and we try to be flexible as we can yeah. to meet everyone's needs. And there are choices to make. Yeah. You know. And there's there's priorities. Yep. Yeah. Thank you again. You're really welcome. Enjoyed it. Excellent. The doctor level on a program that I run at the have run at the Ashfield, and I have to say that her devotion to inclusion is amazing. Um, I'm very happy at what I see at the school. I'm always impressed with the art projects when I walk in and see all the art projects posted around the gym, and I just, you know, I can't actually believe the quality of work that comes out of the students. It's you know, something that you'd even see here at the high school, you know, with the miraculous art program that we have here. It's really impressive. And your students are incredibly nice. Staff is incredibly welcoming as well. And I just have to say Thank that, you. you know, working with you has been a pleasure. <laughs> and can, you know, can I come again? This is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the programs that you offer at the school are great. I love Thank the you. diversity that you offer the students because I know that students don't like to always have the same elective over and over again after Great. being a student in Brockton sometimes. I know that that was one of the things that we always wanted as students. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. for coming. Um, you have just a, a great, great school. The, the Ashfield is near and dear to my heart as, as somebody who went to the Ashfield as a younger kid. I actually drove by there the other day and showed my son uh, where his dad went to school. And he was like, well, where's, where's the playground? And I was trying to explain to him, you know, how when I was a kid we played on, 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 the, on the, the concrete. The, the concrete. <laughs> and we played kickball yeah, played and, and played floor hockey in the gym. And, and, and just such a great school. And, you know, Thank you guys are doing great work there. Thank yeah. you. We, we'll still even have the kids go out for recess over there. We have eighth graders that play tag. I yeah. mean, it's it's an incredible place. Thanks. Looks the same. The classrooms look like I was still there. <laughs> it's a very bright school. Thank you. I was impressed. of probabilities. I mean, it sounds so much edu more educational than casino. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But does Dr. Cancel involved in that now? The um, he's welcome. He should be. There. He should be there. He should be the the mentor for that. Anyhow, super it, it was terrific, be great. But as Dr. Lovell told you, you know, going around uh, the sugar high, you know, cotton candy. It was wonderful. It was learning. It was families coming together. I couldn't move when I was there. There was there was not a spot to be had. There were that many people, and just to just to see the teachers, all of your staff committed to it, all of the families coming out that night. And if you remember, I think it had snowed. It had. It was just one of those nights yeah, last week, weather. and yeah. uh, and it was certainly well attended. And and that's what makes us a great school system is that we are inclusive. We do things to bring families together to encourage them to support their children in learning. And I think the thing I want to say say, Mr. Henningsen, you just mentioned it looked the same. And, you know, when we talk about our facility master plan and you talk about a middle school, you see us trying to make sure that they have science lab, thank goodness for the grants, that they have opportunities with robotics. You saw some technology. But all of these things, again, are going to have to be addressed as we go forward to make sure that our children have uh, the latest technology and the same opportunities 
that kids in other districts have. So, you know, again, thank you. Thank you. Excellent presentation. And again, very informative for all of us. Thank you. Thank Good. you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Rogan. I do want to call up. Can we, do we have Mr. Rogan to come back up for a presentation? A special presentation. Mr. Rogan, I'm sorry I jumped so quickly. No problem. With the Mr. Thank you, Mr. Smith, and thanking uh, Mrs. Barry for allowing the uh, Kennedy School to go forward with the Blessings in a Backpack program. And uh, one of the things, Mr. Minichello, that we'll be able to do is we wanted to do this as a trial to get it going and get the logistical things out. And uh, one of the things that Mrs. Barry provides is um, elementary uh, principals meetings, so surely share that with your PAC, and we'll be able to share it at our uh, principals meetings, too, so that if other schools want to get involved, they'll be able to um, learn some of the things that we were able to work out logistically as well. So thank you for your attention uh, with that. There's uh, one other thing that I'd like to uh, mention to you tonight. It's in recognition of a student who is a uh, former uh, Kennedy School student who currently is a senior at Brockton High School and he came to uh, visit me early in the school year and uh, was interested in um, having the Kennedy School be the site for his Eagle Scout project and uh, he wanted to know if there were uh, any ideas and anything that he could do to help his uh, school where he lived in the uh, neighborhood. His name is uh, Fred Madlier and what Fred did is um, came up and we went through our courtyard and with the Kennedy School being built in 1965 uh, it was built with a courtyard in the center um, there were some things that we worked on uh, during the summer uh, Mr. Thomas was able to have a landscaper come out to help with some of the trees that were um, aged and needed uh, some work and uh, he had the masons come to fix the steps that led into it and made them handicapped accessible and uh, one of the ideas that we had is to have the courtyard be more uh, an outdoor classroom that would be available for uh, more use and that's the uh, idea that we discussed uh, with Fred and uh, every um, afternoon during the uh, week all of a sudden we'd look out and Fred would be out there with his notepad and his camera taking pictures and coming up with designs of things that he was going to do and he was able to uh, have that become a reality for us. He uh, provided uh, the leadership for his scout help and his parents and uh, his mom is here with him today. His mom was his right hand uh, person in helping to organize as well as his dad as well. So I'm happy that they're able to uh, be here. When Mrs. Smith was over um, at uh, a visit and she had Mrs. Meeks with her. We were able to go out and things were almost finished at that point and she was um, just thrilled seeing the things that would happen and the things that we'll be able to uh, to do out there this spring. Um, we want to have a kind of a grand opening when we'll have uh, things ready to go. It was finished right around when the bad weather started so it was kind of uh, too muddy but you'd be able to see the, uh, the picnic tables that um, he was able to uh, construct. There are um, flower beds that the different classes will be able to plant and grow things in them and uh, as I said he did a wonderful job just doing some of the work that we needed to uh, do to uh, have it be a nice area and uh, Mr. Thomas was uh, thrilled when he came over to see it as well so uh, I appreciate Mayor Carpenter and uh, Mrs. Smith helping me to recognize Fred and uh, they're going to help to present this to him as a certificate of appreciation presented by the Brockton Public Schools to Fred Mathier for donating his time, energy, and creativity to improve the courtyard at the John F. Kennedy School as part of his attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout. His efforts demonstrate that young people can make a lasting and positive difference in their community. So I'd like to ask Fred to come down to Mrs. Smith and uh, to Mayor Carpenter. There's um, just one thing I'd like to say. I'd like to um, present a little gift back to um, Mr. Ro Mr. Rogan for all his support back when I went to the Kennedy School from first to third grade. I moved here to, uh, in the first grade. And when I came here, I really didn't have anything. I was just, I mean, I had my family and I had... <laughs> <laughs> of course, I was a school. I, 
I was uh, very worried, and the Kennedy was a very accepting place, very warm, to the point where when I came back last year hoping to do a, an Eagle Scout project, many of the teachers still remembered my name. I mean, how many schools can you say that do that? And for that, for this kind of um, for this kind of work, I had to present. I'm okay. Not only having that for our students to use, uh, our families when they come to the Kennedy School. I was also a Kennedy School family. And my daughter was excited to hear that the courtyard was going to open up. So we're, we're very excited. Thank you very much. And thank, thank, you. thank you to mom and dad. <laughs> you could have uh, Fred's mom stand, please. Of course. Nice. L lots of wonderful information. So I'll now move on to the transition team to update you. And you've heard me talk about the transition team since I think almost a year ago. And one of the things we talked about today at executive team is changing the name from transition team to our strategic planning team. But I will tell you we brought together uh, probably over 30 administrators including principals, uh, executive team members, uh, members from every one of our different levels last Wednesday and we met all day at the Keith Center. We started to work on uh, a vision, our mission, our core values, our core beliefs. We talked about work we have for the school committee to join in on their vision. Um, we did uh, an analysis of a lot of the information that we received during the listening tours and during the transition team subgroups. We looked at uh, emerging themes and one of the things we're going to do now in the next couple of months, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, is we're going to be working diligently to start to put together those emerging themes that will lead us for the next three to five years. Uh, just this past week you were given the district review that we have received. We are uh, right now in the process of reviewing it uh, and looking for inaccuracies or corrections that we need to make before we send that to the DESE. Uh, we'll be talking about that in uh, another meeting and obviously that will be something we're looking at as we continue uh, our strategic plan. Um, you had a timeline. I believe we gave that to you in your information uh, packet this past week. So a any questions about the strategic planning or? That's great. And the last thing is the um, mid-cycle review for the superintendent evaluation. Um, I'm excited to tell you that Baseline Edge is here. So we're training uh, staff members this week with our first uh, on-site training. It's a two-hour training. Uh, Dr. Moran has been diligent in getting all of our administrators uh, lined up for training this week. We'll get back to you for a training on Baseline Edge. But before that, um, we had talked about doing a mid-cycle review. Uh, unfortunately, we won't have baseline edge to do that, but I am preparing and hopefully this evening we can come up with a date for uh, a subcommittee. I think we were looking at the 24th of March is our first available Tuesday night. So you can get back to Wanda on that, but that's the night I'd like to actually start to present the information to you. And as we said, the one thing I want to mention again, that when we talk about uh, educator evaluation, it is for 100% of our professional staff members. That means everybody from the superintendent to the principals to all administrators and to all teachers, and that is our goal. And again, you saw the uh, accelerated uh, educator evaluation plan. That was in your packet. I've worked very closely with Kim Gibson, uh, the BEA, with our staff members, you know, to make sure that we're are able to support this effort for our uh, professional staff. And that just is... One more item? Huh? Well, that's it? That is it. I think we just have okay. items to refer All to the right. committee. So at this time, if there are any members that would like to uh, propose items to be referred to subcommittees. I think 
we had. Uh, Did you know the something for the 25th, that Tuesday? I think we were looking at uh, March 11th, which is next Tuesday, correct? Yeah, so you'd like to do the evalu superintendent evaluation? I'd like to do that on the 24th. Next, on the 11th, I'd like to uh, look at the building naming. Uh, we have uh, three requests that have come in. I believe, uh, Mr. Thomas, we've gotten the information that we needed. So okay, so that's so we're okay. So the 11th for building naming subcommittee. Okay. And the other one was so the facility uh, facility subcommittee. We did get the information back on the feasibility study done on the Whitman School. So that should also be on the same night as the 11th. Right. That's basically the same members, right? So, who's chair of that? Mike, Patty, you're on that. So we're gonna do. We were looking at a 6 p.m. in the meet, a 7 p.m. Okay. And then Are you going to need a full hour for the building naming? No? Yeah, Mrs. Joyce. Um, refresh my memory. We will we will meet because we have a new policy in place. So we will meet. This is going to be the report the coming back. This is this we'll right. This is not the public hearing. Okay, so this that will be the, scheduled from that. This There's is the okay. recommendations coming back from the ad hoc committee to mm -hmm. the building naming subcommittee. Okay. So, Mr. Thomas, do you think that needs an hour? Or? Um, it, it probably is going to probably need 30 to 40 minutes. Nice. Right. We'll do an hour then. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, so, 6 o'clock for building naming and then 7 o'clock for facilities on the 11th. Is that okay with everybody? And then, Superintendent, then is it March 25th you're looking at then? 24th. It's again a Tuesday night. The 18th no, is a school committee meeting. That's not adding up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 25th. My math. It's the new math, Superintendent. It is new math. <laughs> so March 25th, Tuesday, for the for the Superintendent Contract Subcommittee yep. to uh, go over mid-cycle review okay. under Edaval. Okay. Sure. Any objection, Mr. Winchella? That okay with you? So 6:30 on the 25th for the Superintendent's uh, Subcommittee. That's a subcommittee of the whole. Okay. Any anything else anyone else would like for subcommittees? Um, one available space. I mean, we plan on doing it. We subcommittees are supposed to be held at the Arnold. Yeah. So, so we'll check on the Arnold so we'll theater the for availability and confirm with everyone by email. Okay. okay. Sounds like a plan. The only other thing I'll, I'll mention is um, at the direction of the superintendent uh, school committee retreat. Uh, in January, February, February, I'm losing track. Uh, one of the things we had talked about were protocols. Uh, Mr. Minicello and I are, are going to be getting together uh, on Saturday morning to, to go over the protocols and hopefully we'll have that back to you uh, very soon. Okay. Any other items to refer to subcommittee? Okay, so then we'll move forward to unfinished business, which is the approval of the 2014-2015 school calendar. This has been looked at a couple times previously by the committee, but this is we're looking for a vote for approval tonight, Superintendent. Um, this is second reading. So we're looking for an approval tonight. Okay, so I believe all the members uh, of the committee should have copies of the proposed school calendar for the upcoming school year. And it has been reviewed, but I'm sure the superintendent would entertain any questions. Mrs. Joyce? Motion to, motion to approve. Second, any discussion on the motion? One of the uh, concerns uh, I want to bring to your attention is we have added the November 4th date, which is an election day. It's a gubernatorial election. And we're look looking to have that off for our students. I am in discussion uh, with Kim Gibson, uh, looking to possibly have that as a professional development day for staff. So right now we're, we're in discussions about that, but that will be a day off for students. Yeah. I, I support that. We've talked about that in the past that we can't necessarily do every primary, but on election days that we expect some sort of significant turnout, like a gubernatorial or presidential election. Um, I, I think, you know, we've spent a few years and a lot of money and work making the schools locked down and secured and tight. 
opening them up and letting in thousands of strangers seems to kind of go a little bit against what we work towards so um, in, in addition to the safety concerns of tr heavy traffic in and out of the vicinity of the school the parking lot and all those things with over 8,000 walkers and all that so um, for the sake of one day on the calendar it seems to be mm -hmm. the prudent thing to do so I, and I believe it takes that. us to the 19th which is a Friday Mr. Mitchell, on the motion? Um, uh, I think all of us are in favor of that. I mean, many of our parents have certainly voiced that at our PTA meetings. <coughs> We've all witnessed at some of the polling places some of the drivers who aren't familiar with the school coming into uh, one way, the opposite way. Um, it's just, you know, some of the schools are configured such that um, the traffic and the entrance is just not conducive to safety. And uh, I, I, we've heard horror stories in other districts, knock on wood, not ours, where there have been accidents. So um, I think this one's a no-brainer for all of us. Good. Yeah, I think we're all on the same page on that one. Mrs. Joyce? Uh, yeah, sure. Height on days next year because we are able to start Labor Day at the beginning of right. September, yeah. just the way that Labor Day falls. Right, we have an early Labor Day this yeah. year, which helps. Yeah, so tremendous. that's worked in our favor. So I believe Yom Kippur is on a Saturday. And that's on a Saturday, yeah. so that helps. Those little things help us a lot. Yeah, absolutely. There were questions uh, from a number of school districts, uh, superintendents comment to, commenting to each other. The 1st of January is a Thursday. There have been a number of times we've come back on the 2nd. But it being a Friday, it, it just didn't make sense to, to most of our neighboring towns. So it looks like the consensus is that people will have off on the 2nd. Yeah. Uh, some districts are actually closed for close to two weeks. Yeah. That's the way the holidays fall. Okay, there's a motion on the floor, properly seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It passes unanimously. And uh, so that brings us to new business. Any members would like to bring any new business on the floor? Can I get the order? Oh, yes. Yep. Can I get the order? Yep. Just get it here. I'm sorry. Right here. Yes, thanks. Thank you. So. Anyone want uh, new business? Mr. Minicello. Last week I attended a um, session over at the main library with regard to early childhood technology. Uh, there was a great presentation by a company called Footsteps to Brilliance. Um, the, the chief executive officer, uh, Eileen Rosenthal, made a wonderful presentation and showed us some software that um, I would say is like addictive to kids with respect to making learning like gaming, you know, on tablets like my friend Andy's playing with right now, um, and not listening to me, but that's all right. That's why Andy's um, so smart. No, yeah, yeah, yeah sure you are. Yeah, sure you are. Um, <laughs> He's looking at the scores of the game. Who's he kidding? Yeah. So, uh, um, you know, laptops, even, um, you know, cell phones. And um, it, it just, actually, um, Jocelyn's children uh, were demonstrating for the crowd, and they um, basically stole the show. Um, they're, they're incredibly cute and um, incredibly smart. Um, but uh, you could just see how they were into it. They were having fun. Um, and what was amazing about the programs is that it's so adaptable in terms of the, the programs will adapt to your child's abilities. So you know, depending on how aggressive or um, advanced you are, the games adjust to that level of skill. And they're also um, situated that they're translatable. Um, so, you know, for our English language uh, learner population, uh, they come in Spanish. Um, so it, it was really um, a great presentation and what was amazing is that um, there were a lot of people in attendance um, that I would say were um, willing to partner with the Brockton Public Schools, willing to <coughs> invest with the school system in um, 
providing uh, licensing because that's basically what it's all about is the licensing of these programs so that our kids can access them from their homes each child or each family um, each family can log in to um, the site and uh, the kids can basically you know play and use these things you know on the weekends in the car whenever um, so it's a very powerful tool and what was amazing is that um, um, the prior Commissioner of Education David Driscoll. David Driscoll. David Driscoll um, accompanied Eileen Rosenthal, and he wasn't doing it out of um, um, any type of um, monetary compensation. He was doing it and endorsing the program because he sees this as a game <coughs> changer for. Um, kids that are struggling. He sees it as a very useful tool. Um, in addition, uh, David DeRussi, De, De Rossi? Dr. DeRussi from Malden, from Malden uh, was there and he's utilizing it in his district and he came simply um, to basically also endorse the program because he was impressed and sees that it's really helping his students. Um, so I, I think it's something that we need to pursue. Um, I asked um, Mrs. Rosenthal if she would come um, and do a presentation for the rest of the committee because I was just so impressed with it and she'd be happy to do that. Um, I think she might be coming, she's from Washington DC and I believe she'll be coming back up either in March or April. Uh, we were in March, uh, April. Uh, so I'm going to try to arrange something maybe in a curriculum subcommittee meeting um, so that she can demonstrate it for all of us and um, get your opinions on it. Um, so in a nutshell, that's, uh, it, it was just a very good night, a very good presentation. Glad you brought that up, Cello. I, first of all, was very excited about the people that came. It was community partners that came, um, private schools, uh, Bright Day Nursery, YMCA. I could go on and on with the number of organizations. As you said, along with uh, some foundation members, uh, we certainly had business people there. And when you gave us a new grant and development director, uh, Laurie Silva and Karen Watts, uh, and again, this is an office that is working towards bringing these kinds of people together to support our children in learning. So thank you to Laurie, thank you to Karen. Uh, just an excellent, excellent job that night. A lot of information and I know uh, Laurie is looking to put together, I saw a billboard today of us talking to the community again about footsteps to brilliance. But next steps are to try to get supporters and funders on board to, to help us give this gift to our children and our families. Absolutely. Sure now. I, I like your tie tonight. Oh, you do? It's not something I would actually wear myself, but it <laughs> looks pretty good. Some on people you. can handle yeah, it. Yeah, Some people yeah, just can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I know you have an item, Superintendent, but I would just like to mention. Um, uh, for folks that may be watching on TV on Wednesday, that uh, Wednesday evening, uh, March 5th, tomorrow night, uh, open to the public. We're having an overdose prevention forum at the War Memorial Building from 6.30 to 8. Our city, like the rest of southeastern Massachusetts, is in the midst of an opiate overdose crisis right now, epidemic, whatever you want to call it. Unfortunately, we had another death in the city yesterday. Uh, in spite of the best efforts we're making. So uh, this is co-sponsored by myself, the district attorney, the police department, High Point, Learn to Cope, um, along with the Plymouth County Sheriff's Office. So for anyone that's interested in uh, information regarding overdose prevention, intervention, treatment, um, we'll have all those things there. The police department will be represented. The DA's office will be represented along with the other agencies that I mentioned. So 6.30 to 8, Wednesday evening, March 5th at the War Memorial Building.
Good. And the superintendent. And I have, um, we work very closely with the Family Center of Community Connections of Brockton, uh, Juliana Langville and her staff, and they're going to be having on Saturday, March 8th at 1 p.m. Uh, there'll be refreshments and activities for children. They're having a grandparents raising grandchildren focus group. And it'll be talking about resources, supports, activities, uh, what, what you need uh, to raise your grandchildren, which is, which is happening more and more in our community. So we have flyers. I can make sure that uh, Wanda gets it out in the information booklet, but it is Saturday. Yep. I'm planning on attending that one. Okay. Anyone else send a new business? The only other thing is Read Across America. I know oh, so many I of you yeah. were in the schools yesterday, but I want to tell you that it isn't just a one-day event. If you have an opportunity, if you have some time, uh, many of our schools are certainly looking for readers. One of the things that we did do <coughs> in Central, uh, we brought together uh, Dr. Julianne Andrade. We uh, brought Joan Creeden, who's one of our administrative assistants, Jocelyn Meek, uh, our communications officer, and we started to brainstorm you know, things that we can do to build a culture at our office and one of the things we talked about was getting our staff at Central out into the schools. You know they support the schools each and every day. You know they make sure the teachers are hired. They make sure the children are fed with uh, lunch programs and all of the things you know that go on under our roof at 43 <coughs> So to allow them to, we purchased uh, Dr. Seuss books, they brought them into the schools, they read in payers, they told me they were so excited, I think we had over 40 members from Central deployed into the schools to read to our children and to see what, what goes on each day. And the highlight, and you had to see this, and I think Jocelyn is going to put something together for you, was the cat in the hat and thing one and thing two that went out into the schools yesterday to celebrate Dr. Seuss and read across America and today at the Barrett Russell the kids were so excited to tell me that those were the visitors that they had there so just just a wonderful opportunity thank you to uh, Dr. Julian Andrade her staff and uh, again if you have an opportunity please let us know we'll get you out into a school I think you did yeoman's work you did four I, schools five. Oh wow yeah, yeah I did a blast <laughs> yes I spent the first half of the day I read in five different schools every level from kindergarten to fourth grade had a blast with the kids and uh, a couple of the classes also prepared question and answer sessions for me and remind me back to my days doing appearances with Mr. Matter during the campaign some of the questions were so tough but um, it was it was pretty interesting it's pretty the perspective of fourth graders is is pretty keen but um, the reading was a lot of fun Dr. Seuss can be a little more challenging than you might think um, but it was it was a lot I think just about all the members of the school committee were out yesterday reading so it was a great event and I, you know it was something we probably should definitely do more often than just once a year thank you for the invitation anyone else I guess I'll entertain a motion second all in favor this meeting is adjourned thank you